Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. It appears there was a slight leak from Fender this week, and it involves the Fender Player Plus series. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about these things today, but normally when there's a new model that comes out from Fender or Gibson, sometimes they'll tell a dealer, hey, accidentally leak all these things. That way the news articles get all written about, hey, you're not supposed to know about this, and then I make a video about it too. It's just free public advertising, right? It's all in good fun, though. It makes it more exciting to talk about new releases. So apparently a shop in the UK accidentally leaked these on Reverb and their own website. And that kind of gave us a sneak peek at what is coming soon. As soon as late September, so yeah, we're really coming up onto this. And I'll be honest, a lot of these, they don't really interest me that much. I'm sure they've got interesting specs and they're not that badly priced. But there were two finishes I really wanted to talk about. That's this one and this one. These are kind of interesting finishes, so let's start with the Stratocaster. It kind of reminds me of like a Gibson fade finish, and Fender's done similar things to this before, but the top half of the guitar is like a yellowish orange color, and then further down the instrument, it is red. It's kind of an interesting look for a Stratocaster, because normally they're like this one. They have some sort of a colored burst with a dark edge, or it's like this, you know, you see all these solid color Stratocasters all the time. But to have the blending of the two at a fairly affordable price range is kind of cool. They're calling this one Tequila Sunrise. But my favorite one has to be this one down here. Strangely just called Silver, it's a black into white. Now, I have never seen that on a Telecaster before, but I don't know as much about Fender history as I do with the Gibson, so maybe they've done it before, maybe not, but that black into white transition, that looks cool. Especially with that pickguard still staying black. And the uncovered pickup with the covered pickup. I know that's what most Telecasters have anyways, but it just works with the symmetry, you know, white, dark dark light. However, I think this would look way cooler with an ebony fretboard, but these are coming stock with a Pau Ferro fretboard, so that, that's just pretty basic for a made in Mexico Telecaster. But as far as the other ones, I mean, you get these really cool Cosmic Jade Telecasters and Stratocasters here, that's an HSS setup, whereas this one's just kind of regular, but then you get your Nashville style tellies that have that middle pickup, so it's kind of like a Stratocaster, but in the Telecaster's body shape. <laughs> These are kind of cool. I'm sorry, we don't have any like really good photos to show you. I just found this gear news article that kind of had some screenshots of what they had done. But it appears we're also going to be getting similar colors on J and P bases. I'll be curious to see if they do the uh, color into the other color versions on these. Because if I was going to review one of these, it would have to be this new Telecaster. Just because, you know, it's kind of cool. I might buy the Stratocaster for an unboxing, but as far as a full review and demo, I typically like the Tellys better. So we'll leave all the nitty gritty details and specs until if and when I do get one of those in. But definitely let me know your thoughts about these new finishes and pickup configurations, body styles, and whatnot in the comments section below. But our next topic today comes from Craigslist. So somebody sent me this thing for 750 bucks. It's on the Los Angeles Craigslist. So if you happen to be in that area, feel free to go check it out. But for 750 bucks, what do we got here? Well, first off, we have a bleeding Illuminati eye that's made of some bricks. It's kind of got a psychedelic vibe with some purple, white, and red outlines to that. And then we have, I'm, I'm not really sure what to call that. Is it meant to be a fire? Is it meant to be a brain? I don't know. I don't dig too much into that kind of stuff, but it's interesting. Like the artwork, I'm very picky with it. This one, it's okay. I mean, I could do without the blood coming out of the eye, but that's just me. But then you flip it over to the front. Oh, okay. So this is one of those Gibson Les Paul Double Cut Juniors. You know, the tribute models that I've done reviews on. Wow, two years ago now. <laughs> I remember those things are brand new, but here they are, all discontinued and whatnot. They were pretty good guitars. There was a time that they had blown these things out, especially the older version with the output jack on the front. Like, you could buy these things for 500 bucks. That's not the same today. It's just like when the Derek Trucks SGs got blown out for 1100 bucks by Sweetwater, like, what, six, seven years ago? Go to the used market today, they're about 1800 plus. That's just the way it goes sometimes. These things have been consistently selling, you know, easily between like 750 to 1000 bucks anymore. So 750 bucks, it seems about right if you like this artwork, but let's continue to look at this. So they've swapped out our knobs, kind of like for like Fender Elite style knobs almost. At least that's kind of what it looks like with the rubber grippers right here, but otherwise they're kind of like the metal knurled knobs. 
And then they've swapped out the Gibson P90 for what looks like maybe a P90 sized humbucker. We'll have to read the description to see what that is. But I really, really enjoy the front on this. I'm curious if this started as one of the red ones and then they kind of distressed it or just completely painted over it or if they took the time to sand it. This right here kind of reminds me of a Cobra. At the same time, you could kind of see like a crow's head right here, you know, the eyes right here, Illuminati onto the forehead and then a beak. <laughs> I don't know, maybe this has some completely different meaning behind it, but I, I kind of like it. It reminds me of a snake. That's pretty cool. And then continuing on here, they even went as far as doing a design on the side. And most people, they don't take the time to do the artwork on the side or the back because people just don't see it. So as a custom commission piece, they're not really even asking a premium for it. I mean, as long as you like the way it looks, it seems to be an okay price. Heck, they even went as far as uh, putting a little bit of a design right here on the neck. However, in this photo, it doesn't seem to be quite as dark of a red. I guess you can kind of see that right here too, but that back is definitely way more saturated than the front. I kind of wish they would have done that for this as well. Not quite sure why this particular photo is in black and white. Hopefully they're not hiding a headstock repair or anything, but it looks like they might have sanded off the finish from the neck to make it play a little bit nicer. But those started as satin finishes, so maybe it just got too glossy and he wanted it to go back down to satin. Then they kind of gave it like a, a faux stinger without messing with the serial number and everything. So at the end of the day, kind of cool. Let's check out the specs. Well, he says it's in solid shape, no repairs, and that's about it. He wants to trade for an American base. Eh, we'll see if he gets it. Let me know down in the comments section if you would buy this for 750 bucks if you happen to be local. For me, I think it's kind of cool. It just depends on your personal preference of artwork. Next up, I wanted to talk about this, an offering from 10S. They sponsored a review and demo about a year or so ago. And since then, this company's kind of had some issues with customer service. I've been getting a lot of complaints that uh, they never delivered their order or is like over a year late. Now I get it, sometimes production things happen. So if you happen to be interested in the guitar that we're going to talk about today, don't say I didn't warn you that it might take longer than normal to get and definitely pay with a credit card so you have some sort of a protection. However, the guitar that they had sent me was like their Adam Jones replica, you know, like something inexpensive for 400 bucks. It wasn't the best guitar in the world, but it had a great look and with some modifications, it was going to be perfect. And I remember telling them, if you're going to rip off the Adam Jones, you might as well do the Buckethead too. And yep, here we are. About a year later, they finally did it. So the GF baritone inspired Killswitch Alpine White, they call it. Now, they gave it stainless steel frets, 24 of them, with the correct 27-inch baritone scale length. With the maple top and one-piece mahogany body, like, the specs are looking good, even the ebony fretboard. With a very flat 16-inch radius, that'll be different from the Gibson iteration. But take a look at this. It looks pretty darn good. They even have the two red kill switches right there, the white pickups. This looks very convincing. And I don't think they're doing a massive run on these by any means. I think their website currently says limited to five. Now I swear that was like limited to seven and it's slowly going down, but I might be incorrect on that. But if you've always wanted a bucket head and even the studios have been out of your price range because what is like $5,000 nowadays, here's something kind of similar. I mean, it's kind of their own thing, but copying off of the bucket head as well. But these ones are $620. And you can listen to some sound samples on their website right here if you're interested. I just thought it was cool that they finally did that. But I'm sure that they're only doing five of these to, you know, not get any cease and desist legal notices in their mailbox. And the last one I want to talk about today, one of these L5S's again. We talk about them occasionally. I've been looking for one that is a two-piece center seam because most of them are three or more. And this one is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at that. Two-piece top, crazily figured, but unfortunately, somebody swapped out the pickups. What's that all about? Now, granted, they're really cool pickups. I had never heard of these before. I had no idea Seymour Duncan made a humbucker-sized Alnico 5 staple pickup in here. And they're called Seymour Duncan Fat Staple Alnico 5 Pickups. So that's my primary reason to want to show you guys this, because I, I had no idea that existed. Granted, they're kind of expensive for pickups, 430 bucks, and you have to do them on special order. 
That's probably why I've never seen these things before. But that means you could take a regular black Les Paul custom and convert it to a 54 one. Now you might not have the mahogany top depending on which one you're converting, but hey, you'd still have the staple P90 look. I think that's just fantastic. But unfortunately, you know, vintage guitars, original pickups are very, very important. So despite them being high end, I mean, I guess you could sell them off and maybe replace one of the original pickups, but hopefully they didn't replace anything else on this. But just look at all that figuring. That's such a fantastic example. Even the gold hardware is in great shape. Every angle you look at this thing, it is big and active. It appears to be in pretty good shape. Maybe a ding right here that could also just be a reflection. Kind of hard to tell, but then you get to the back even. It's not matched in the slightest, but it looks cool, right? <laughs> it's like a lightning strike down here, and then it just kind of travels into the ground in a different direction, I guess you could say. And it doesn't look like the back plate really matches. Usually they do, but this one... Maybe the lighting's not right, maybe the lighting's not right, but it just doesn't seem to be a perfect match there. But if you're not familiar with these, they're essentially a solid body L5, but they just made them tinier and electrified. <laughs> kind of like the L6S, except for now we're in L5S territory. These were very expensive guitars. Looks like we've got a small ding right here and somebody swapped it out for Schaller strap buttons. Not that big of a deal when the guitar looks like this, but I've never seen this before. An extended stinger in black. So the back of the headstock completely black. You can see your serial number, but then they did the center seam right here. Because you gotta remember, these are three piece maple necks. But did they not do the walnut in this one? Yeah, so look at this. Normally it's a five piece neck, three pieces maple, and two little stripes of walnut. I'm curious. Are those walnut stripes even there since they decided to do this extended black stripe here for some reason? Because it's possible that that's just covering that up. I kind of want to buy this guitar just to look at it in depth to see is that the case? Otherwise, that could actually be a really special example if that is factory original. I mean, the fretboards on these, they've got the fancy L5 curly Q down here and then just so many multiple <laughs> layers of binding, abalone inlay. I'm pretty sure anyways, that's very tame abalone, but you can kind of see some of the other colors right there, similar to like a V Les Paul. And it's just a nice looking guitar here, right? So let's read our description real quick. So besides the pickups being changed and knobs being replaced, it's got minimal fret wear to the original large frets. They added some foil shielding tape, okay? So they might have replaced a switch at one point in time. Routing to cover on inside is likely factory. That kind of scares me a little bit because they didn't show us any photos of that. And they say all their instruments are accurately pictured and described. Maybe I'm just not aware of a model that had that. I would have to do some more research, but maybe there was a small run that was done like that for a dealer. I mean, if that is factory original and it blacklights correctly, 82 is not that bad of a price. You could find era correct original pickups. It'd be difficult, especially to be completely gold and to swap back the plastics to the way that they're supposed to be. But something like this in really clean shape, all original, easily can fetch, you know, eight to 12,000 to the right guy. Cause there's a lot of people that want these two piece center seams. Heck, they can go up to 12 and a half occasionally. So that's not the worst price in the world if you are an end user collector that wants a magnificent example that kind of has an interesting past. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.